So today we're going to be covering a question from my post on YouTube that I asked any special video and somebody gave you gave me a great idea to me. They want to know, explain what is it meaning of combustion, retrogression and debilitation. A planet is combust, retrograde and debilitated. So that's what we're going to discuss today. OK. Um, and this is a very interesting, very interesting, because I think this is an overlooked thing in astrology most of the time with a combust. Like, okay, you see a C next to a planet in a software. What does it mean? What is it doing? So combustion is simply when a planet is directly very close to the sun, where especially a certain planet can become combust far away, like Mars can become combust literally 14 degrees away from the sun. Okay. Um, most of the planets, you know, when they're around sun, I mean, depending upon the various degrees, if you see a C in your report and in your chart, that means a planet is combust. And if you see an R, it's retrograde. And of course, if you don't know if a planet is combust or retrograde, you can go to astrologykeras.com or kerasastrology.com, where especially in the shop section in option six, you'll get the report and every other option will uh, give you a reading and the report. And of course, my wristwatch and wealth course is also going to be there, which is now open, which is now hottest thing in town. You will see so many, I mean, enormous, uncountable people literally after taking the course, changing things and it's just changing things dramatically. So, uh, and I've actually made videos on those. And I'm going to make videos on those. Like all the messages that I get. So, see what a combustion is. First of all, which planet is burning a planet, combusting a planet? It is sun. Surya. And what is sun in astrology? The father. Government. Authority. Okay? So now think about the fact Take any planet, okay? Moon is not really combust transcendentally. It's known as a no moon, Amavasya moon, okay? But especially planets like Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn become combust. Rahu, Ketu cannot be combust but they, because they actually put the eclipse on the sun and moon because they actually become powerful there. So imagine your father is standing here. Imagine a government official is standing here, police or IAS officer, right? Some powerful politician, which is again, part of the government. They're standing here. Here is little old you, whether you're Saturn, Mars, Jupiter, Venus, Mercury, okay? You're walking, walking, you're having fun and you're, you know, yelling, screaming, shouting with your friends. And as soon as you see an authority, what happens when you see police? You become attentive. You're like, oh, okay. You become quiet. You become, you behave like a civilized human being. And until you have crossed them and got around the corner, yeah, you start shouting again and start having fun again. Right? That, th this is what happens. So what combustion shows, it doesn't show that you come here and pff, you get burned. Like from a Mortal Kombat video game with Scorpion. What happens is when a planet is next to the sun and it's combust, the significance of that planet is now being overruled by the sun, by an authority or by government. Meaning, whatever the planet is, you are, you, you cannot take an independent decision made on your own regarding this planet. It has to be now approved and stamped by an authority. And like I said, sun combusts a planet. Sun is the father, but sun represents many things. Sun is any kind of an authority. When you walk into your office and you, you're, let's say you're working for a small company, 30, 40 people, and that owner of that company is in the office, right? Their son. 
you're going into a court. When you go into a government building like a court for anything, right? You're wearing a tie. You're wearing nice dress or clothes, looking very conservative. You have this, your demeanor changes inside a courtroom or some government building, especially when they do your check and they put your back through the scanner. They're like, okay, I got to behave. You behave. You say, yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yes, your honor. You're not going to use their name. So what happens is if let's say a planet like Venus is combust. Venus, Mercury are usually would be combust many a times. Combust Venus shows your decision regarding marriage, regarding money, regarding diplomacy, regarding what your environment is that you want has now an authority with it. So usually it will show that either a person has to get an approval of the father, mother, to get married. One has to get approval from the girl's father or mother to get married or vice versa. One feels like that their marriage, they can't just take an independent decision in marriage. The marriage itself has to get an authoritative approval, which means Let's say after before marriage, you can just go anywhere, eat something, you can go buy anything. Nobody's there to tell you what to do. But now, post-marriage, when Venus is combust, you can't just say, okay, let me just buy this and I'll just buy it. Fine, it's 10% of my savings. Oh no, because if your spouse finds out, now you have to deal with that battle for half an hour, one day, two day, three day before it calms down. Like, why did you spend this much here? We need to save money. We need to invest money. So a combust planet doesn't mean its power are defunct. Doesn't mean it's uh, suddenly it's no longer doing anything. Because if a planet is burned and combust and you're born and you're living, then, there's, then you, you're pretty much sent by the gods because whatever that organ is represented by that planet, like Venus will represent kidneys. You shouldn't have kidneys or kidneys should be burned. But that's not the case. So what it shows is that whatever decision you're making related to the planet, Mercury can make decisions related to business, paperwork, documents, education. The independentness of that planet is no longer there. You're going to be surrounded by authority that you're going to have to abide by and you may enjoy abiding by. It's not like it's a bad thing. Combustion is actually may not even the bad thing. What it does do is that the relation that that planet also represents is being now controlled and authoritative, so it doesn't do so well. So Venus represents marriage when Venus is next to the sun. Relationship with the spouse, especially for a man's chart, wife, can become in such a way that they feel like that they're being subservient to the spouse. It's no longer like 50-50, it's now 80-20. So that relationship is burnt. With the Mars, you can see their husband, brother, best friend. Best friend is Mars, right? Especially like when you sit, tell somebody, oh my God, you're like my brother. You're like my sister. That's Mars because Mars is a natural significator of siblings. So that relationship either becomes dynamic of authority pretty much from their side or that individual now has to deal with authority to get something approved in their life. Profession would be it's the same thing with Saturn. Usually a person can be in a very uh, authoritative position or in a position of like working in government where there's a lot of rules, regulations and, you know, NDAs. Your work, even if let's say you're in private sector, your work will actually be the type of work you, you can't just do things independently. You're going to have to get like four or five different approvals to do something to because the decision you made, you made that decision, but it's not like you can execute on the decision because of that combust sat. An authority has to approve it. 
Okay, so that's what, and this is why a combust Saturn can make it difficult for someone to do business because they will always feel internally, subconsciously, that am I making this right decision? I wish I had somebody to make this decision for me. And this is why you'll see if somebody is having a combust Saturn and does business, they will have people around them for suggestion. Like if you are, let's say, owner of a company, you're like, let me hire a manager to take care of this. Somebody to make this decision. Somebody who's qualified to make this decision. So it naturally happens. With Jupiter again, Jupiter is combust. One's father is going to have to bring wisdom. One's teacher and mentor becomes the approval of your overall life. One needs guidance. One cannot be independent thinking that they can guide their own life or attain wisdom. Wisdom won't just come from experiences. Wisdom will now have to be approved by a certain authority. And of course, then with, because of Jupiter, with Sun, of course, it can bring a lot of fame, recognition in a person, but also it can damage a relationship with the children at one point. Because as much as you hold your child and their little babies and cute and they're laughing and smiling, when they become teenagers and 20s and 25, they, they, they may not like you. Most of the time it happens. They hate you. They don't want to be near you. They think you're uncool. No matter you, how much you think you're cool. Now, when a planet is retrograde, okay? Retrograde planets, it is said that they become very powerful. Yeah, they become very powerful, but then also, can they be powerful in positive way or negative way? Because a retrograde planet, in our perspective from Earth, shows it's going backwards, but it's not. It's moving at its speed. But it's showing that there's some unfinished business with a previous house, with a previous sign. So retrograde planet shows that there's some very significant point in your chart that must be dealt with and completed. Not only the previous sign, but the sign it's sitting in, because that's where its retrogression started. So the house they're sitting in and the house they're previous shows an unfinished business, unfinished karma that has to be paid off. Like retrograde Jupiter, let's say, in the fourth house, affects the fourth house and the third house, meaning major karma with the mother will be there. Don't think exalted Jupiter and all of that. Exalted Jupiter can actually bring the hardest life in an individual's uh, own life. And of course, retrograde into the third will show they will have major karma to pay with either younger sibling or they will desire younger sibling. They will not have younger sibling. But there's unfinished uh, work related to communication, working on communication, media, marketing sales. So this is what will happen with every planet. Now, one thing I will say, I see a lot of retrograde planets every day when I do reading. Okay, some are, okay, some are great in the retrogression. Because remember, a retrograde planet will literally affect eight to nine houses when they're retrograde. Because when they're retrograde, and this is where especially the Nandi Nadi, the easiest astrology that you will learn comes into play to show you what retrogression is doing. Because wherever the planet is, you'll see that particular house and the trine from it. So if Jupiter is in the fourth, it'll affect the 12th and the 8th house. But then when it's retrograde, it's also affecting the 3rd, 7th and 11th house. Then also it is affecting the signs where it's placed, where the signs are placed. So let's say, for example, for Scorpio Ascendant, Jupiter is retrograde into the fourth house. So it affects that house, 8th house, 12th house, that's three houses. Then it goes retrograde, affects the 3rd, 7th and 11th house, six houses. Then it affects the second house and the fifth house because it's controlled signs. So pretty much eight houses are being controlled now. Ninth and tenth or all the houses can come into play if those planets are also influencing Jupiter. This is why a retrograde planet kind of like becomes Rahu and Ketu. Like, for example, if you study KP astrology, Rahu and Ketu will have like line of significance of pretty much all the houses. 
Rao, who's in the first side of the effect, it'll give results of the first, third, fourth, sixth, eighth, ninth, eleventh, twelfth. That's what happens. So usually with retrograde planets, this is the most important significance. But also, one of the toughest positions that I have seen with a retrograde planet is when I've seen Saturn with Rahu and being retrograde. This individual can be extremely lost and confused about their profession. Even if you guide them, they cannot understand if that is the right guidance, if this is what they should be doing. Because also, this is one part, because I'm just telling you what the practically, you may read something in the book that Mars retrograde is the most difficult, Mercury retrograde, I'm just telling you what I have seen in practical, real existence of people in their chart is Rahu and Saturn together when Saturn is retrograde. That's the most difficult. Otherwise, if Saturn is retrograde, Jupiter is retrograde, I've seen people in working for high, high companies, whether it's like Deloitte or Raytheon and, and Lockheed Martin and Bain and Company. I mean, I've seen all of them doing very well, retrograde. But is that one thing that when it's retrograde, it's confused as a person, along with even Jupiter and Rahu, but that's not related to their profession and money, is their own identity. Their own identity is just, they, they'll be the type of person who'll just follow too many trends because they'll feel like, okay, maybe I will find my identity in this trend, in this political view. Okay, well, that's not working. Let's change to this. The other thing about retrograde planet is it's unconventional. It's unconventional. Why? Because it's going against the grain of the movement of the universe from our perspective. It is shown that if it's moving back, it's like, hey, you all go that way. I'm going to stay back here. So in a way, this unconventionalism does very well, actually. It's like the herd of sheep is going where the wolf is. The wolf is disguised as a sheep and calling for a party. They're all going. One sheep is like, that sheep, that, that, that sheep is a little too bigger than us, more bulkier than us. What is this? This is weird. I don't like this. Plus the red sun is rising. I don't like this. I'm going to stay back. So they stay back. So it is unconventional. Like, for example, a retrograde Jupiter okay, can show unconventionalism towards how you raise your children. What type of a guru you pick? You pick the most unconventional guru. Everybody's like, why are you following this person? Why do you consider them as a guru? But you are that person who's seeing the herd of crowd going towards this one thing. Whether it's sattvic or tamasic doesn't matter. You're going to take the different route. This is why even Jupiter and Rahu, that's a Jupiter, Jupiter's con, uh, conjunct Rahu and it's retrograde. Well, this person will be the bearer of protecting the world from disillusion or delusion and, and manipulation. Because the whole world is caught up in this smoke and mirrors of, let's say, social media and celebrities and sports figures and everybody wants to get the most likes and the most views and the most subscribers. Where the Jupiter retrograde with Rahu will be like, wait a second, we're, we're losing our sleep, we're losing our connections, our relationship, losing our focus on divinity and God. Food is being contaminated. What is, what is this? So especially that unconventionalism of this Jupiter may create crisis of identity, but also in that same in that same realm, this particular conjunction will show a person a perspective far away from what the whole world is doing. Now, in that particular unconventionalism, either they can make it or break it. Meaning, let's say this person decides, I want to have a business, but I'm not going to be on social media. I will never touch social media. Now, 90% of the time, 
it can break a person's business because if nobody can find you online, how are they going to do a transaction with you? Unless you have a store in a mall and they're like, okay, I'm going to start my own store in the mall and I'm just going to deal with the local people. Now, maybe if they're aligned with their chart in terms of their profession, their store can become the most famous and somebody else is doing the social media for your store, right? I love watching these videos in India of food carts. That's all I watch. Like, well, actually my mom watches it in her apartment, in her room. And whenever I'm there hanging out, I'm just watching that, like them making like paneer and dal and chicken and mutton. And I'm just, I'm like, love it. Oh my God. I wish I could just take a, go through a wormhole and go there right now. So that person who's in a dhaba, in a little cart, selling the food and everybody's there. And they're like, this is the most famous, this and this in Kanpur or in Rajasthan. Now what's happening? Some big YouTuber comes in or TikToker comes in looks at it, okay, or, or, or not looks at it, records it, shows it to their place. Now, their marketing is happening through this person. They don't need to be on social media. So these things happen, but it is going to be that unconventionalism towards one wisdom and belief. But the identity crisis happens with Jupiter. With Venus, definitely it can, it'll reverse two, twice, especially in a world where arranged marriages happen like in India or Malaysia and Singapore and all these Eastern Hemisphere countries. Um, you will have reversal of arranged marriages. You're about, like on the day of marriage, they can back away from getting married. And especially engagement happens, back away from that. For me, I think engagement is a waste of time. Oh, I've been engaged for two years. Oh, and what happens if they break? Well, I don't know. I guess it won't be an engagement anymore. No, you just, if you're going to get married, you just get married, you know? Um, and then um, with especially Venus, you'll have a very unconventional wife. Her thought process, her interest in movies and food and politics, music, spiritual beliefs, they'll be retrograde. They'll be away from what you are have grown up with. Is that good or bad? That's subjective to anything and everything. There are 108,000 different flavors. One likes the other, the other one likes the other. So it's not good or bad. It just is kind of unconventional. And because of retrograde Venus, you know, this is where Nandi Nadi is so important with retrograde planets, because you can see which planet they're moving towards, which planet they're meeting in the previous house, which of course, you can now join that with my Nandi Nadi course on my academy, which is finished. Later on, I will do the more advanced one, but it's just, that whole thing went for a whole year. I was, thought I was gonna finish it in three, four months, went for a whole year. But you can see that this retrograde Venus, as much as it shows the promise of everything, now it shows the promise of divorce. Or marriage was just not going anywhere, but the retrograde Venus ultimately gave the blessings. This is why it's not like a bad or good thing. It's just how, who the planet meets and who the planet is with. This is what the planet will show. Like, for example, a retrograde Jupiter... Let's say it's in the fourth house. It shows that in your previous life, you did some mishap during the deathbed of your guru. When your guru was either dying post-death or when guru dealt with some controversy, you ran away or you did some mischief there. That's why you got a retrograde Jupiter. Retrograde Jupiter goes into, let's say, your 12th house. You took advantage of Guru's knowledge in the previous life. This is why now you will become a vagabond to find 
a guru in your life and you may not be able to find the right guru in your life. Jupiter in the, let's say second house retrograde. You weren't there when your guru was sick and needed you. That's why you got that retrograde Jupiter in the second. So there's all these things. These There's all these meanings. I don't want to go through Mars, Venus, Mercury and all of these things. Uh, because then it becomes like too long of a video. But there's these sutras that you can use. Including with Venus and sometimes with retrograde Venus you don't want to say about some house especially on a widespread media form to vilify somebody else's Venus from what they have done in past. We have all done horrific, horrific things in our past lives of past thousand lives. Maybe we rectified them 50 lifetimes ago and this is why we have a much decent and better life now. But yeah, I mean, this is why some of these sutras are um, quite toxic especially on an open form like this. You know, maybe I would have said something 10 years ago on here. You know, when this was a small beginners, it was a baby. Now it's just like the world get to see it. Now let's, if let's say planet is combust, planet is retrograde, but then also is debilitated. Now what is with the debilitation? This is going to be a short one. I don't know. I don't know. Debilitation to me is no longer matters anymore. You got a debilitated son in the ascendant. You can become a politician, famous. Son is in the 10th house. You'll be going to government in the highest places with the debilitated, uh, let's say debilitated Mars, who's combust and retrograde. You can become the highest army officer with this. What matters, Stop. see, if let's say, for example, let's say you have a planet which is retrograde and uh, combust and then debilitated. Let's say, for example, it is Mars. Okay, and let's say that Mars is in your 10th house. What now it shows me that whatever you deal in your work with that Mars, which is in Cancer in the 10th house, very close to the sun and is retrograde, it shows you will be surrounded by too many emotionally unbalanced people. That you will have to now fight your way to the top because those in, uh, emotionally unbalanced people and emotionally unavailable people will not be there to help you. So what the sign is showing is your surrounding. But if let's say you wanted to see a weak uh, Mars, that would be Mars in the fourth. That would become weak. Mars in the eighth may be, or actually Mars in the seventh may become weak. But again, even then, I don't really care if it's in the fourth or seventh. It can still do great. Why? What if Mars is surrounded by uh, Jupiter previous to itself in the fourth house and Sun is in the fifth house at two degrees and Mars is at 27, 28 degrees, still combust, also retrograde. I mean, this is, this is a great Mars who will make huge money outside of their society, will have multiple properties, land, real estate, and will make connection with the highest form of people probably in fields of law and uh, law and order. Not the show. But you see, so when you say debilitated, that just doesn't mean anything to me. You say my son is exalted, great. Enjoy your exalted son. It's not doing nothing. It is the sign, number one. It's tattva, what is doing, the surrounding that it's in. Okay. But the most important thing, if you want to know, the simplest thing is the house. House will tell you and the neighbors will tell you if this planet is good or bad. So, so debilitation doesn't mean anything. Okay. So anyway, guys, this was my video on this small subject. If you're new to our channel, subscribe below so you don't miss any type of videos. And again, if you really want to just make natural remedy happen, 
with your wealth and money and career is the easiest thing is the wristwatch, which is on you all day from the smallest, cheapest, as long as it's a correct watch, you will see ultimately you will have the premium watch, which is, of course, you'll find that on my academy. Anyway, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.